This is IB Physics SL. I am Mr. King. Topic 2 Mechanics. Section 2.1 Motion. Part 1 One Dimensional Motion. Motion is the process of changing position. We will identify, measure, calculate, or model the following properties of an object in motion. Position, distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Distance is the length of the path traveled between an object's initial position and final position. It's a scalar quantity, which means it has magnitude only. The unit for distance is the meter. You'll see it spelled with an RE in IB documentation. Here's a place you might recognize. At the top, we have Comac High School. Also in view is one of my favorite places in the whole world, Taco Bell. Occasionally, I'll go out to Taco Bell for lunch, and since there's not a lot of traffic in the middle of the day, I'll take the most direct route, straight down Town Line Road and a left on Jericho. When I go this way, my distance is 2,580 meters. More frequently, I'll stop at Taco Bell on my way home after school. Since there's more traffic at this time, I like to take the back roads. When I follow this route, my distance is 2,960 meters. For either of these trips, we can determine my displacement. Displacement is the length and direction of an arrow connecting an object's initial position and final position. It's a vector quantity, which means it has both magnitude and direction. It's also measured in meters. This arrow represents my displacement vector. Whichever route I take, I'm starting at the entrance to the Town Line Road parking lot, and I'm ending at Taco Bell. 2,030 meters south-southeast of where I started. We also want to determine my speed and velocity. Average speed is the rate at which an object's distance changes. It's a scalar quantity, and we could say that average speed equals distance divided by time. The unit for speed is meter per second. We can write this as meters times seconds to the negative one power, which is how you'll see it in IB documentation, or we could write it as m slash s. Average velocity is the rate at which an object's displacement changes. This is a vector quantity because it includes direction. We could write that average velocity equals displacement divided by time. The units for velocity are also meter per second. Let's calculate my speed and velocity for both a lunchtime trip and an after-school trip to Taco Bell. At lunchtime, I drive a distance of 2,580 meters, and Google Maps says it should take about 4 minutes. That gives me an average speed of 11 meters per second. Once I get to Taco Bell, my displacement is 2,030 meters south-southeast of where I started. If we divide that by the same... 240 seconds, we find that my average velocity is only 8.5 meters per second, south-southeast. After school, I drive a distance of 2,960 meters, and Google Maps says it should take about 6 minutes to get there. This gives me an average speed of 8.2 meters per second. Remember, regardless of which path I take, my displacement is going to be the same if I start and end at the same place. So after school, my displacement would still be 2,030 meters south-southeast. Divide that by the 360 seconds, and we find that my after-school average velocity is 5.6 meters per second south-southeast. Let's talk about the mile. In phys ed, students are required to run the mile. To do this, students run four laps around our 400-meter track. Let's assume a student completes all four laps in 10 minutes. What is their distance, displacement, average speed, and average velocity? Let's take a look at acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. It's a vector quantity. 
we can write a equals v minus u divided by t. And you can find this equation in your data booklet. a stands for acceleration, v is for final velocity, u is for initial velocity, and t is for time. The units for acceleration are meters per second squared, which we can write as meters times seconds to the negative 2, or meters slash seconds squared. Let's take a look at that acceleration example again. The car accelerated from 0 meters per second to 40 meters per second in about 5 seconds. We could calculate the acceleration of the car to be 8 meters per second squared. Now that we've introduced the idea of acceleration, let's talk about average velocity again. If an object is undergoing a uniform acceleration, then there's an alternate method for determining its average velocity. In this case, we can just say that its average velocity is the average of its final velocity and initial velocity. In the previous example, the car accelerated from rest to 40 meters per second. Its average velocity is 20 meters per second. The original method for calculating average velocity is to take the displacement divided by time, which we can write as s for displacement divided by t. Since both of these equations are equal to average velocity, we can set them equal to each other. And if we use some algebra to rearrange the variables, algebra. we get s equals 1 half times v plus u times t. You can find this equation in your data booklet too. Time for some more algebra. Let's take our acceleration equation and rearrange it so that it's solved for final velocity. Then we could take our distance formula from the previous screen and substitute in u plus at for v. Once we simplify things a little bit, we end up with the equation s equals ut plus one half at squared. Ready for more? All right. Let's go back to our equation for acceleration, but this time we'll arrange it as t equals v minus u divided by a. This time, if we substitute in for t in that distance formula, and after we combine some variables and foil some binomials, we'll end up with the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Let's take a look at an accelerated motion example. A car accelerates from a velocity of 5 meters per second to a velocity of 20 meters per second in 6 seconds. How far did the car travel during this time? For this first example, I'm going to show you all of the steps. First, let's identify our givens. u is 5 meters per second, v is 20 meters per second, and t is 6 seconds. Next, let's identify our unknown, specifically the unknown that we're trying to solve for. In this case, that's displacement, s. Next, let's figure out which equation is appropriate for our list of givens and unknown. In this case, the appropriate equation is s equals 1 half times v plus u times t. After this, we'll substitute in our given values with units. And finally, we can solve. We find that the car traveled 75 meters while it was accelerating from 5 meters per second to 20 meters per second. Let's take a look at another example. A spacecraft traveling at 6,200 meters per second engages its thrusters to accelerate to a velocity of 6,500 meters per second. If the spacecraft accelerates at a rate of 4.9 meters per second squared, what will be the spacecraft's displacement during this acceleration? Based on our givens and our unknown, we'll use the equation v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We can substitute in our given values, and we find that the displacement of the spacecraft during this acceleration is 3.9 times 10 to the 5 meters. One more example. After slowing down to a speed of 16 meters per second while passing through a station, a train accelerates for 30 seconds, covering a distance of 1,020 meters. What is the acceleration of the train? 
Based on our givens and our unknown, we'll use the equation s equals ut plus one-half at squared. After we substitute our given values, we can calculate that the acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared. Let's take a moment to talk about the direction of vectors. Displacement, velocity, and acceleration are all vectors. That means they have direction. Conventionally, directions are designated positive and negative signs as in the axes of a graph. It's important to note that this is just a convention, not a rule. As long as opposite directions have opposite signs, you do you. Freefall is an example of accelerated motion, which is when an object is allowed to fall freely, affected only by the force of gravity, which means it is not under the influence of air resistance. Since freefall is caused by gravity, we denote the acceleration of an object in freefall, little g. The average value of little g near the surface of the Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. Let's take a look at a freefall example. A baseball is thrown upward with a speed of 22 meters per second. What is the maximum height it will reach? For this example, I'll show all the steps. Starting with the givens. The initial velocity of the baseball is positive 22 meters per second. The final velocity of the baseball, when it reaches its highest point, is zero meters per second. We know the acceleration of the baseball is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. As for our unknown, in this problem, it's displacement, s. The equation that works for these givens and this unknown is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We can substitute in our given values and then solve to find that the baseball reaches a height of 25 meters. Let's look at another example. A rock is dropped off a cliff. How long does it take the rock to fall 26 meters? For this problem, since we don't know the final velocity and we are looking for the time, we'll use the equation s equals ut plus one-half at squared. We can substitute in our given values, making sure to call the displacement and acceleration negative since they are downward. When we solve this, we find that it takes the rock 2.3 seconds to fall off the cliff. One more example. A basketball is thrown upward, and as it falls back toward the ground, someone reaches out and catches it. If the ball is caught 2.1 meters above the position from which it was thrown, after the ball has been in the air for 1.3 seconds, how fast was the ball originally thrown? Once again, since we don't know and we aren't looking for the final velocity of the basketball, we'll use the equation s equals ut plus one-half at squared. When we substitute, we'll call the displacement positive 2.1 meters because it's above the position where it was thrown, and of course we'll call the acceleration negative 9.81 meters per second squared since the acceleration due to gravity is always downward. When we solve this for u, we find that the initial velocity of the basketball is positive 8 meters per second. Let's take a few minutes to look at graphical representations of motion. For each type of motion that we'll examine, we want to be able to sketch the displacement versus time graph, the velocity versus time graph, and the acceleration versus time graph. First, we'll look at an object that is not moving. In this case, its displacement is always the same, its velocity is zero, and its acceleration is zero. Next, we'll look at an object that is moving with a constant positive velocity. Its displacement is increasing linearly with time. Its velocity is a constant positive value. And its acceleration is zero. Now let's look at an object that is moving with a constant negative velocity. In this case, the displacement decreases linearly with time. 
the velocity is a constant negative value, and the acceleration is still zero. Finally, let's look at an object that is accelerating with a constant positive acceleration. This object's displacement increases quadratically, its velocity is increasing linearly with time, and its acceleration is a constant positive value. There are other types of motion we could look at, but these four examples are the most common and they give you a good foundation to build upon. If we have a displacement versus time graph, the slope is basically the change in displacement over the change in time. This means that the slope is equal to the velocity of the object. Be on the lookout, slope is going to be called gradient in IB documentation. For a velocity versus time graph, the slope is essentially the change in velocity divided by the change in time. This means that the slope of a velocity versus time graph is acceleration. The area of the space between the graph and the x-axis is base times height. Even if the shape were a triangle or a trapezoid or something else, the equation for area is still basically base times height. In this case, the area would be velocity multiplied by change in time. If we rearrange our equation for average velocity, we find that displacement is equal to velocity times change in time. This means that the area of a velocity versus time graph is equal to the displacement of the object. Finally, we'll look at an acceleration versus time graph. In this case, the area, which is, again, base times height, is acceleration times change in time. If we take a look at our acceleration equation, we can show that acceleration times change in time is equal to v minus u. This means that the area of an acceleration graph is the change in velocity of the object. That's it for now. See you next time.